everyone welcome or welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is emma if you're not new here you've probably seen me do one of these videos before and that's because every month i film a video where i wrap up all the books i read during the month i will say may was such a good reading month i don't know what it is but the past couple years i've read more books in may than any other month out of the year i don't really know why that is but now it's like in my head that may has to be a good reading month so i think i like push myself to read more and more every year i read 11 books which is how many I read last May, I believe. I'm gonna quickly go through the stats before we jump into all of it. So like I said, I did read 11 books. I did unfortunately have one DNF and we'll get to that in a minute, but I did have two five-star reads and I've noticed lately I've been more picky with books. I used to give out five stars left and right, but now I've noticed I'm starting to be more picky and like more specific with my ratings. So having two five-star reads in one month is huge for me. Little genre breakdown for you guys is that I read three contemporary romance, one YA romance, three YA fantasy romance, and four adult sci-fi books. The first three books I'm going to mention in this wrap-up, I actually have a whole other video on. They were all highly anticipated reads for me for 2024, so I decided to film a little reading vlog of me reading these and sharing my thoughts and feelings along the way, so I'm not going to go too in-depth in this video on these first three books. If you guys are interested in knowing more of my thoughts and feelings and reactions, definitely go check out that video over on my page, and I'll also try to like link it up here or maybe it'll be up here if you want to click on it and then come back to this video but the first book i read in that video is just for the summer by abby jimenez abby jimenez has quickly become an auto buy author for me i have yet to read a book by her that i did not absolutely love and this one was an automatic five star read for me as soon as i closed the book i also highlighted so many quotes in this book because her writing is just beautiful and she somehow manages to make her characters feel like real people because they're so relatable this is a contemporary romance a lot of people classify abby Jimenez as like a rom-com writer but one thing I really love about all of her books is that she incorporates more serious topics and things that the characters are going through and I think that makes them feel more real and it makes it easier to be emotionally connected to the book. This book is following Emma and Justin who meet through a reddit thread. Justin posts that he has a curse where every girl he dates goes on to find the love of their life after they break up and then Emma sees this post, DMs him and is like oh my gosh the same thing happens to me. So they decide that they're going Going to date to hopefully cancel out each other's curses and like hoping that after they date each other they'll both find the love of their lives if that makes any sense which i thought was a super interesting and fun premise but obviously like i said there are some deeper more serious things going on in both of these characters lives i don't want to say much else about it because i don't want to give away what else is happening in the plot but that's the basic premise of it and i just love this i ate it up i believe i finished this basically in one sitting if not it was at least under 24 hours and this is also now officially my new favorite abby jimenez book it knocked yours truly out of the number one spot but i still do love yours truly i just love this one a little bit more and it was also super fun to read a book where the main female main character has my name and yeah automatic five stars i don't really know what else to say about it i love these characters i love this story i love abby jimenez's writing i love everything about this book and i highly recommend this book and all of her other books to you guys because i honestly cannot say enough good things about her books next book i read in that video is powerful by lauren roberts this is a novella that follows the powerless series which i read powerless the first book Book earlier this year and this is like the perfect little quick story to kind of get me reacquainted with the world and get me even more excited for the second book in the series this book is following a side character from the main series and kind of just her little romance that's happening but it's happening in the same timeline that powerless was happening in so i kind of already knew what was going to happen at the end if you've read the first book you know i was terrified for the end of this and i did cry but i just absolutely loved being in adina's perspective i also thought this was really unique because typically in a fantasy book a female main character is going to be like a badass but this book had a representation of a female character in a fantasy world that had soft and gentle strength and i think that was something so powerful no pun intended um to read about because to me it was very representative of a lot of strong women that i know again not going to say much else because you guys can go watch my thoughts and reactions and all of that in the other video but yes i'm so glad i read this i think i ended up giving this like 3.75 stars somewhere in that range which is really good for a novella because i don't typically rate novellas very high this was very enjoyable loved it and i'm so excited for the next book to come out the third and final book i read in that reading vlog video was funny story by emily henry and emily henry is another one of those authors that i just already know i'm gonna enjoy the book before i even open it i'm going to try my very best to explain the premise of this book but i feel like 
I'm not gonna make any sense. Basically, this is about Daphne and Miles, both of whom's significant others left them to be together. What? Like I said, I literally don't know how to make it make sense. Basically, Daphne is engaged to this guy named Peter, and the night of his bachelorette trip, he comes home, breaks off the engagement with her, and tells her he's in love with his female best friend. His female best friend was dating a guy named Miles, and she is leaving Miles for Peter, who is Daphne's fiance, ex-fiance now. I'm gonna stop trying to explain it. Like, if you wanna know more, look up a synopsis, but I'm, I'm trying my best. But basically, Daphne and Miles come up with an arrangement to live together since they both kind of got screwed over. And the story really takes off from there. Again, not gonna go too in depth because I do talk a lot more about it in that other video and I don't wanna give spoilers. I will say, I think I had very high expectations going into this and I don't wanna say it was a letdown for me because I still did really, really enjoy it, but it's my own fault that I was just assuming this was gonna be a five-star read. So while I was going through it and there were things I wasn't absolutely in love with, I was kind of feeling like bummed, I guess. Definitely is not a five-star read for me, but I do think I would have enjoyed it better and had a better experience reading it if I had gone in with lower or no expectations. I did end up giving it a solid four star. As always, Emily Henry's writing is great and I did still like highlight quotes in this book because it was so enjoyable, but it just wasn't my absolute favorite Emily Henry book, if that makes sense. And I feel like I've been seeing a lot of other people on either one end or the other about this book. Some people love it, it is their favorite Emily Henry or other people are like me and they're just a little bit let down. I don't like to use the phrase let down because I still really enjoyed this. Obviously I gave it a four star, but I guess just it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. I'm gonna stop rambling about this one. If you wanna see more of my live reactions of reading this, like I said, go check out that other video. I also read Nightbane, is that what it's called? Yeah, Nightbane. Why, why can't I read the title of this? Nightbane by Alex Astor. This is the second book in the Light Lark series. I believe it's gonna be a trilogy, but currently there is only the first one and this one out so far. This to me is a very controversial series because I see so much discourse about this series and the author all over TikTok. And honestly, that's what intrigued me to read it. I really enjoyed the first book. I believe I gave the first one, honestly, maybe a four star, maybe 3.5, somewhere in there. This one, I don't think I enjoyed as much. This is a YA fantasy romance series, and I think the premise of it is really interesting, but it's gonna be hard for me to explain. Basically, the premise of the first book is that it's a fantasy world, obviously, and there's all these, all these different, like, groups. Like, there's the wildlings, the sunlings, like, I don't really know how to explain it, but like different groups of people and they possess different powers and there's a leader of each group and every so many years this island appears out of nowhere and the leaders all come together kind of for this like competition thing, but their end goal is to figure out how to break the curse that's on the island so that it can be there like permanently and it's not disappearing because each group of people has their own curses. I'm doing a horrible job at explaining this, but that is the gist of it and our main character Isla goes to compete in this and ends up kind of in this love triangle type of thing. The first book ended on a crazy plot twist, which made me want to jump into this one immediately. This one was still good and fun and like really easy to get through, but I did not like it as much as the first book. I just feel like there were so many things that could have been done with the plot that would have made it exciting and interesting, but the direction it went in just really fell flat for me. It's very hard to explain what I'm talking about because I can't go into more detail without giving spoilers, but yeah, I don't know. I just, it was just a miss for me. I do think I'll probably still read the third book because this one also ended on a cliffhanger. I don't know. I can't even really put my finger on what it was. I just didn't enjoy this as much as the first one. But yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling. This is a like, not love for me, but again, still enjoyable. I'm not trying to hate on it. Just think there's a lot of things I wish would have gone differently. And also the main female main character became kind of annoying to me in this book, which was upsetting because I enjoyed her in the first book. Next book I read is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowlin. Now I had heard people raving about this book. It's a YA romance. I'd heard people talking about how sad it is and how much they cried. This book gave me whiplash with the way the characters were written. They are high schoolers, but they never seemed like high schoolers. They either seemed like 30 year olds or they seemed like 12 year olds. And the whiplash between even just the way they would communicate with each other and the thought process of the main character, I just really didn't understand. It wasn't very cohesive to me. This book is about Autumn and Finn slash Finny. They call him Finny. Autumn to me was such an insufferable character. 
and yeah I really don't even know what to say about this book because I was so frustrated by it Autumn was such a pick me girl and like so quirky. Oh my god, I'm being so mean. I'm not trying to be mean about this book, but I don't know. Something about this just irked me. Finny is an angel. Autumn, I did not care for, and her reasoning behind the choices she made just made no sense. And honestly, the book kind of felt pointless because, like I said, I'd heard everyone cries in this, so I assumed it was going to have a tragic ending, but it literally tells you in the first chapter what that is, and then the rest of the book was kind of just boring, and it was like this build-up to this sad thing to happen, and I couldn't even feel emotional about it because I already knew what was going to happen, and the main character was annoying. I know I sound like I'm being really hard on this. I did still give it 2.75 out of 5 stars, which I feel like is like almost a three so it's really not that low but my reasoning for that is it was at least somewhat entertaining and it wasn't like it was hard to get through this was a really easy read kind of a mindless read to me but i think i was just expecting this like amazing storytelling with such a heartbreaking ending and like what happens is sad but the way the story is told just wasn't for me and i know so many people love this book so don't come at me but i just do not think that this is for me and I definitely am not going to be reading the follow-up book because I've heard people who loved this book say the follow-up book is horrible so if I wasn't a fan of this I'm sure I will hate the other one so yeah like I'm not mad that I read it but I just really don't get the hype at all I was not a fan then I read The Liar's Crown by Abigail Owen. This is a YA fantasy romance and I got sent this in PR a while ago and for some reason just never really gravitated towards it so I decided to pick it up this month and I really don't even think I could tell you what the characters names in this are. Uh, the guy is named Revan. I literally can't remember what the girl's name is. Oh. Anora, the girl is named Anora. It should not have taken me that long to recall this. I got through this pretty quick. It was an easy read. It was not by any means a favorite of mine. I don't know. I just think I didn't feel that connected to the characters. The actual fantasy world, magic, and like all of those elements were actually super, super unique. I had never really read anything like this before, but the characters to me, I just could not connect to. And I'm a very character driven reader. So if I can't feel connected to the characters, I'm probably not going to enjoy the story. And that is not the author's fault by any means. I just really couldn't bring myself to care. Hair. but that being said it was still entertaining and intriguing but I just was never at a point where I was like "Ooh, I can't wait to see what happens next if that makes sense I feel like I sound like I'm being really hard on it I did give it two and a half out of five stars mostly just because as soon as I finished it I knew this would be forgettable I probably was never gonna think about this book again and I haven't thought about it since I finished it until now the premise of this from what I can remember is that there's this kingdom and there's twin sisters one who's the princess and one who is like a body double for the princess so one grows up living in the castle being the princess and the other one lives somewhere else training to take the princess's place if there's ever a situation where she might be in danger and that premise was super interesting all the different kingdoms and the magic system i found very intriguing however i just the execution of it was odd to me. I just felt like there was all this setup for where the plot was gonna go and I was hooked and then the plot went in a totally different direction. I can't really articulate what it was about this, but it definitely was not my favorite fantasy romance at all. But it was still an entertaining read and I liked it for what it was. I just kind of wish it had been better. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book to anyone, but it was a really quick read to get through and it was at least entertaining. I just really didn't care for the characters and I found the pacing of the plot and the direction the plot went in to be odd. Okay, I feel like the last couple books I've been a little bit critical of, but we're now moving into some that I really, really enjoyed. I read Golden Sun, which is the second book in the Red Rising series. It took me so so long to get into this series simply because I was so intimidated by it and speaking of I have a whole vlog where I specifically read books I'm intimidated by it's up on my page now if you want to check it out and I also will put it 
up here if you want to click the link to it but i finally jumped into the red rising series in that vlog and immediately wanted to jump into the rest of it because i loved it it is definitely very complicated and complex which is why i was scared of reading it and i'm not very well versed in sci-fi so i was a little bit worried that i was gonna have trouble with it but i really really enjoyed it this is the second book i think i gave it 4.75 stars it's just shy of a five stars for me pierce brown's writing is insane which is one of the reasons i love this series so much and i think i also enjoy it because while it is sci-fi it has very heavy dystopian elements so there's almost a nostalgia factor to it for me because i read so many dystopians when i was younger and loved them and still love them now but like the mix of the political intrigue the action the relationships between the characters it has the found family trope which is one of my favorite tropes ever i just loved it and i adore these characters and this story but it definitely is is a lot because there's so much going on and the political system and the world building are so complex but nonetheless i loved it so so much 4.5 stars for golden sun i would go more in depth in the plot but one it's kind of hard to explain what it's about and two i feel like you should just go into it blind if you're interested in reading it because it kind of starts to make more and more sense as you're reading the books if that makes any sense absolutely loved enjoyed this even more than the first book and i would highly recommend this series even if you're new to the sci-fi genre i will say i kind of wish i would have read some other sci-fis before getting into this just because of how expansive it is but i absolutely loved it and i wish i would have read this sooner then i continued the series with morning star this was literally a masterpiece. I have no bad things to say about this book. All of the things I just explained about the second book are even better in this book. And honestly, I was shocked that I loved this so much because I enjoyed the first book, really enjoyed the second book, but then this one just blew me away. I gave this five stars. Like I already knew before I finished this book that it was gonna be a five stars that's how good it was and yeah i'm at a loss for words it's so good i'm gonna stop rambling oh my god i love it so much so good such an unexpected five star read highly recommend this series to you guys then i decided to continue the red rising series i believe and i could be totally wrong so someone let me know in the comments if this isn't right but i believe that it was originally a trilogy which i finished out with that last book i was talking about and then pierce brown continued to write two more books in the series i jumped into iron gold which is technically book it's taking place 10 years after book three ends and i enjoyed this i gave it four stars but that is mostly coming from the fact that i already know these characters and this world well so i wanted to know more about their lives i almost wish i would have stopped the series at the end of morningstar which is the third book because it just had such a good conclusive ending i felt satisfied with the story and then this book is taking place 10 years later and opening up like a whole other can of worms all these problems and like i just love these characters so much that i wanted them to be at peace this book was just a lot and it was kind of sad and just like I don't know like I just wish I would have left it at the third book and in my mind those characters would have been at peace and their stories and conflicts would have been resolved and this was still enjoyable like I still liked it but just because of all those things I just mentioned it wasn't as highly rated for me but still a four stars because it's beautifully written it's a great story a great world great characters I just kind of wish I would have left it at the end of the third book and to piggyback off of that i then read dark age or tried to read dark age which is technically the final book to finish out the red rising series but you know how i said that last one just kind of opened up all this other conflict and i guess i just almost felt upset for the characters this one 10 times worse like it was just almost like upsetting to read and i was so sick and tired of reading about and knowing the conflict that these characters were experiencing and the characters are also a lot older in this so the conflicts they're facing are a lot more serious it is a very high stakes series but just i think where they're older characters now it makes it more depressing isn't the right word but low-key that's how i felt reading this so i did decide to dnf it um i may get back into it at some point i think that might be a soft dnf because i do really want to finish out this series it was just getting to be a lot for me and i wasn't feeling like i was enjoying reading the story i will say something that i do like about 
Iron Gold and this book is that we're getting more than just one perspective. In the original trilogy, we're reading Darrow's story and Darrow's perspective, whereas this book and the one before this, we're getting multiple different perspectives, which to me was really enjoyable because you were getting to see like things that were happening kind of all over the place because this is a very expansive world that they live in. But I decided to DNF it. I don't know what I would have rated it and I really can't even remember how far I got into this. I felt like I was forcing myself to pick this up and read this and because of how much I love the first three books I don't want to have negative feelings towards this series so I did decide to DNF it but I am still counting it as a book I read this month because one it's so long that's like three books in one book basically and also like I gave it my best shot I just don't think now is the time for me to be getting into this and then the final book for the month of May is Twisted Love by Anna Huang I technically am not done with this book but I only have a little bit left and I'm honestly probably gonna finish it tonight this is a contemporary romance but it's like very spicy it's a mindless read I've heard mixed reviews about this I've heard a lot of people complain that they hate this first book because of how toxic the relationship is and how unenjoyable the male main character is but I think because I knew that people said that going into it I was like prepared for the worst and I don't know like it's not my favorite book by any means it's not gonna be a book I think about all the time but is it a fun easy entertaining read yes I think I'm sitting at like probably a three star right now but who knows we'll see how the book ends like I said almost done probably we'll finish this tonight um but yeah I kind of just feel mid about this one it's very very entertaining and yeah, that's what I think about this one so far, but I'll give more thoughts. I probably will continue the rest of the series just to see what I think. So I'm sure there will be future videos where I talk about this book and the other books in this series. So be on the lookout for my opinions in the future because right now I just don't really know my opinions. Those are all the 11 books that I read in the month of May. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them and also let me know what you want to see me read next or any other video ideas you'd want to see me do. As always, I do have my TikTok and Instagram linked in the description below if you'd want to go follow me over there and see my other content and don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. You guys have shown me so much love on my last video which was my June TBR list. So thank you all so so much for that. It means the world to me me and also like and comment if you want to or feel like it thank you guys so much for watching and that's all for now bye guys